That spiritual element of dealing with those emotions, the emotional states of human beings, go back to the word qalb, qalb is the place of the emotions, the heart is the place of the emotions, so therefore emotional stability, emotional health was talked about, the heart, the qalb was talked about, however it was found in lots of what we might call spiritual texts, and they were splattered and distributed in lots of different other texts, and so there was no simple book which explained this is what mental health is all about until we come across a scholar called Abu Zayd al-Balkhi and this man is a phenomenal character he's an absolutely a, a phenomenal character uh, and when I first read his the, the book that I'm referring to Masalih al-Abdan wal anfus I couldn't believe it was written that long ago because the terminology that he was using was exactly the kind of terminology that we were using in the mental health movement, for example, which is a, 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 a relatively recent, only a hundred years, that people have been using that kind of language. And some of the, the, the words that he would use would only be understood in, in the, the, the paradigm of the, of the cognitive behavioral psychologist. So he's quite phenomenal. He, Abu Zayd al-Balkhi was the exact opposite. He never went to parties. He was antisocial. He was very, he always sat on the outside. He was always a recluse. He himself went through a spiritual crisis at a very early age. He's the ideal person to write about emotional states. So Ar Razi became a great famous scholar, and Al Balkhi became a forgotten scholar. But his actual work is tremendous, it's enormous. Right, that book I'm just going to talk a little bit about. It's called Masalih al-Abdan wal Anfus, which if you translate it literally, is how to fix the body and the soul. If that's if you were to translate it literally. And it's got two parts. The first top part is, is it's about the simple reminders and advice about how to look after your body. And again, if you listen to it and you read, you, um, you read this book, you'll see it talks about aromatherapy. It talks about the importance of, of going for walks, it's, it, it, it is a whole section on diet. And then he, after he wrote that part of the book, he said, actually, this is no use to anybody because all it does, it talks about the body. And what we need to do is to talk about how do those things affect the heart? How do those things affect your mental state? And then he decided to write the second half, which is, is really the, the, the really important bit the first bit's kind of interesting from a historic perspective because it describes what medicine was like at the time. And it's also interesting because it talks about some really, at the t what at the time must have been really radical. And because they've been forgotten and we're only finding those things recently, um, uh, the, for example, the effect of, as I say, aromatherapy, certain um, smells on and how they might affect your physical body and your emotional states. That's the first part, but the second part really goes into his observations of himself and other people about their emotional states, their um, spiritual states, and their mental health. Um, he also went on to establish a number of hospitals, and these hospitals were completely holistic. They grew the plants that were used as the medicines. So part of the therapy was actually growing the medicines that you would be taking to. It, it, was, a, it, was, it was all about planning around the needs of the patient in a way that it, it, to think this is 800 years ago is it, it, really quite phenomenal. Um, the book was actually discovered, so to speak, by Dr. Malik Badri or Professor Malik Badri, who translated it as, and the title of it is Sustenance of the Soul, Cognitive Behavioral, Behavior Therapy of a Ninth Century Physician. Uh, and obviously he, he, his interpretation is, is in a very modern context and, and the language that he uses is very modern. But if you actually look at the, his, I have cross-checked his translation and it's absolutely superb. And that the wording that he used in most cases um, is, is probably the best, the best way to describe what this, this great scholar had, had done. 
Right, just to go over some, some of the things that he did talk about, like a whistle-top stop tour of, of the book. Um, he said the body needs to protect, be protected from external harm and internal imbalance. So he talked about this external and internal things that are going on around you. What does this mean for the body? It means that you need to make sure you don't go out in the cold, you don't go out in the extreme heat, that you cover your head, uh, that you, you do all of those things to protect your, your body from the external elements. And likewise, you protect your internal structure, so to speak, by eating healthily. So that's the first part in summary. However, when it comes to the mental, the second part, the mental health part, this is where it really gets interesting. What are the external factors that he, that he, he says there are external factors, then he goes into detail. And you can actually look at them in very clear and apply them very clearly to your own situation and in your support to other people. For example, when you've gone through a crisis, when you've gone through a spiritual, you've gone down a spiritual road that you shouldn't have done, one of the most important things is to not go down that road again. 